it's the most wonderful time of the year. All right, I'm not gonna torture you guys with my singing voice anymore. I am so excited, I'm jazzed up. I probably had way too much coffee, but I'm also excited because not only is it Christmas time and it's just like, definitely literally the most wonderful time of the year. I am a sucker for the YouTube content that is going on right now. I love the declutters. I'm here for all the yearly favorites and that is what we're going to be doing today. I am going to be sharing with you guys all of the products that I tested that I loved in the year of 2023. This year has flown by but oh my gosh it was jam-packed with amazing releases, amazing products. So I'm really excited to share them with you guys today. Definitely keep on watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it it really means a lot to me don't forget also to subscribe if you like beauty if you like makeup I got a whole new year of fun stuff coming up so don't forget to hit that red button and also click on the bell so you can be notified of all my future uploads and without further ado let's go ahead and get started because we got a lot to talk about <laughs> Okay, I got my fuel, my Cafe Mole. Actually, it's just a peppermint mocha coffee. I don't know about you guys, but I love peppermint mocha creamer all year round, not just this season, but it especially feels super perfect this time of year with the festive mug. So I'm ready, I'm jazzed. We got a lot of stuff. I'm gonna try to go through these products quickly because I don't want you to be here all day. You know, like I could talk about these products all day, but I know you probably don't wanna hear me talk about them all day. So I'll try to go through them quickly. I think I have mentioned all of these products on my channel before, but I will include close-up swatches when I can, if I can on everything. I'm gonna start sort of in the order that I would do my makeup, if that makes sense. So for primers, I actually didn't have any new primers that I was loving. The same old, same olds like the NYX Plump Right Back Primer was a favorite. And mostly I've just been using like my moisturizer before makeup, but I have really been getting into like a primer spray. So before I go into my primer or moisturizer, I like to sort of douse my skin and some extra liquid hydration. And the one that I've been using is this one from Neutrogena. It is their Radiant Setting Spray. It literally is just what the name would suggest. It's a Radiant Setting Spray. So this isn't gonna necessarily prolong the wear of your makeup, but it's not a overly greasy or oily hydrating spray either. So don't let the name Radiant scare you. If you have more combo oily skin, I don't think this is gonna be an oil slick on your skin. It really just helps to sort of awaken the skin, add a little bit of hydration and plumpness back to the skin. Technically, it's better to put on like a lotion or a moisturizer to damp skin because it just locks in that hydration. So I like to go in with this spray first to give my skin a little bit of juiciness to dampen it up, moisten it up a little bit. And then I go in with my primer or moisturizer. And this one's great. The mister is super fine, amazing and it doesn't disturb any foundation or products you put over top of it. So definitely a winner from the drugstore if you're looking for a really good hydrating primer spray. Moving right along, before I get into foundation and concealer, I wanted to mention actually a couple of color correctors that I've been using religiously this year. So the first one is from Hero Cosmetics. This is their Rescue Balm. Hero is actually more of a skincare brand. They're really famous for those like pimple patches, which I also love, but I saw this and essentially it's just a green colored balm. It's sort of like a lotion-y texture, more liquidy. And how I like to use it is I will take a little bit of this, like a dime size amount or a pea size amount, and I will apply it to the areas of my skin that are super, super red. So for me, I get really red on my nose and in my T-zone. I feel like this really does make a really good difference. It works really great under other makeup products, and I love that it comes from a skincare brand because I just feel like it's doing good things for my skin. I don't know if it is, but at least I tell myself that when I apply it. A couple of other color correctors that I believe launched earlier this year actually were from e.l.f., the camo color correctors. So there's a bunch of different shades of these. I think they have like a blue one, a yellow one, any color under the rainbow, not really, but you know what I mean. My personal favorite is the green and the peachy one. So the thing I really like about these color correctors is that one, they really do help to correct any redness or darkness or purpleness. So they serve in that purpose, but they almost have a little bit of a pore filling primer feel, but not in a bad way. Like they're not super thick 
and plasticky feeling. They just sort of feel like a natural, almost matte finish, but not drying. They're super undetectable on the skin, and if they are detectable at all, it's only that they are blurring and smoothing. So like the best way possible, if that makes sense. So these are really great. I think they're like four bucks. Definitely check them out if you're in the market for some good color correctors. The ultimate best foundation of the year, probably my new favorite foundation, period, is the Maybelline Superstay 24-Hour Skin Tint. This is amazing. Okay, it says skin tint, but it's not really a skin tint. It's more of a foundation. It gives you pretty good medium coverage. I would say a solid medium coverage. It gives you a beautiful glowy finish to the skin, but it's not greasy. Unlike other radiant dewy complexion products, this one wears a really long time. So during the summer, I was wearing this like every single day and my skin was healthy, radiant. I could wear it for like eight hours and it wasn't breaking up. It looked great all day long. So I don't know what magic they put into this, but it literally is the best of all worlds. It gives you that natural finish, but being long wearing and giving you good coverage. So really, really like this. A great one from the drugstore. The best concealer of the year, say it with me, Natasha Denona High Glam. This concealer is everything that I want and have hoped for in a concealer all my life, okay? It is hydrating without being oily or greasy. Again, as you can tell, I don't like oily or greasy on my skin. It also gives amazing coverage. Whenever I look at myself in the mirror when I'm wearing this concealer, I feel like my under eyes are just like doll skin. I feel like I look like a doll. I just love how perfecting it is. I love how much coverage it gives. And the shade range is amazing on this. It's actually a little bit hard to find your shade because there's so many. I have two shades, YP3 and Y2. And I don't really feel like either of them is completely perfect for me. I wish that there was a way to go in store and see the shade range in person, but usually Ulta doesn't have Natasha Denona, which is a shame. But I love this concealer. It's amazing. Definitely worth a try if you're in the market for a new high-end concealer. Okay, moving on to powders. I have two. So this is better than Charlotte Tilbury. Okay, I don't care what anyone says. Everyone raves about the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder. You know the one. I feel like this is better. I've tried both. This one is super smooth, super velvety. It sets your makeup, but it's not drying. This is coming from a girl with super dry skin. I love how it gives you just a tiny bit of coverage, but it's not overkill. You can't see it sitting on the face. It's amazing, definitely check it out. The other powder that I've been loving is from Moira. This is their Set and Correct Finishing Powder. So they have two shades of this. I have the one in 200. Basically, it's a translucent powder, but there are like, as you can see, four different shades. They have like slight tints. They don't really show up super apparent on the skin, so you don't need to be afraid. But what's cool about it is that if you want a maybe a brightening effect, you can go in with the lavender shade. If you need a bit of color correcting, you can go with the more peachy or salmon-y shades. But what I really love about this powder is just how blurring it is. This, under the eyes, is not drying. It's pretty much undetectable. It reminds me a lot of my favorite Pat McGrath, Sublime Perfection Skin for Fetish, that long name. That powder is like my holy grail. This is a close second. If I could never get that Pat McGrath powder again, I would be happy with this one because I feel like it's very, very similar. It's not as thin as the Pat McGrath. That one is like a baked powder that like literally doesn't even feel like powder at all. You can feel this one a little bit, but it is very, very thin, very undetectable on the skin, not drying, not crepey under the eyes and super, super, super blurring. So I love this in the T-zone. I love this where I have larger pores and it's just a beautiful powder. If you have dry skin, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. <coughs> I feel like I'm losing my voice already and we just started. Okay, bronzer, I just have one. This is the Super Shock Bronzer from ColourPop. I have mine in the shade Get Sandy and I have already hit pan on this, which is saying something. I've used this like crazy. So let me just preface this by saying, I don't think this bronzer is going to be for everyone. If you like a super, super, super impactful pigmented bronzer, this is not gonna be the one for you. But if you're like me and you're more fair and you tend to be a little bit more heavy handed with bronzer, almost to a fault to where it can look a little bit super unnatural, muddy on the skin, 
maybe you should try this one because it's not very pigmented at all, but in the best way. It's super thin on the skin. It gives you just enough color. It looks really natural, like you literally went out in the sun. It doesn't look like you have product on, if that makes sense. I also love the texture of this because it's that typical Super Shock formula where it's that cream to powder. It's a cream, but it feels like a powder. It doesn't feel like you're adding another layer of makeup on your skin, which I really like because then it just helps the overall finished look look more natural, if that makes sense. So if you like a really natural bronzer, something that you can't really mess up, and you like more of a natural matte finish, check out these Super Shock bronzers from ColourPop. I think they're super underrated, but I do know and see how they could be a little bit more specific to like what certain people like. It's more of a preference thing, but if the description sounds like it's up your alley, then I think you'd really like it. Okay, I don't know if 2016 is back or what, but for me, I like went crazy with the highlighter this year, okay? I have four highlighters to talk about and I'm not mad about it. I love highlighter. I've always loved highlighter. Actually, one of the first makeup products I ever tried, like before foundation, before concealer, before mascara, was like a huge baked, super glittery highlighter from Urban Decay. I remember it. I bought it from Ulta. It was in a purple box. The box was glittery itself and in the inside was this huge pan of highlight that was just literal sparkle and I would just take a big old brush and just put it all over my face and my husband when he first met me thought I looked like a pixie because that's how much sparkle I had. I wore no other makeup but just that highlighter. So that's how much I love highlighter. My tastes have evolved a bit since then so I'm not dousing myself in glitter so don't worry. Don't click off. So I have four to talk about. Two more high-end and two more drugstore. So one is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is a more recent acquisition. I picked this up during Black Friday when she was doing like two for one. This is the Glow Glide Face Architect Highlighter and I have mine in the shade Champagne Glow. This is gorgeous, okay? I almost didn't want to like it because it's so expensive. It's like $40 or something crazy, but it's amazing, okay? The packaging is gorgeous. The embossing is gorgeous. It makes your cheekbone pop, but in like a natural way. I don't know how else to describe it other than it's, it's intense, but still natural. It literally melts into your skin. It doesn't look like it's sitting on top of the skin. You can't tell where it starts and when it ends. It makes your skin look just healthy and radiant. It gives you that nice little pop without being chalky, glittery all of those negative things that can be associated with highlighters. If you want to try a more luxurious highlighter, I don't think you'd be disappointed. I would definitely recommend trying to get it on a sale. I know Charlotte Tilbury doesn't have that many sales, but wait maybe for like a Sephora VIB sale where you can get a little bit of money off. But if you splurge, I, I it is really, really gorgeous. I can't deny. I can't deny it. My battery is already almost running out. I'm gonna have to take a break. Okay, the second high-end highlighter is from Rare Beauty. Oh, look at this packaging. Look at this packaging. It looks like a little pebble. It's so cute. Rare Beauty gets me with the packaging, okay? Mine had an accident and it shattered. That's one thing I will say about this formula. I have heard it's very, very fragile. If you drop it once, it's over, girl. It's over. I just pressed it back with some alcohol. This is an intense highlighter. If you don't like hot... I'm losing pieces, I gotta close this, okay. If you don't like to glow, do not get these Rare Beauty highlighters. But if you like an intense highlighter, these are gonna be the ones for you. They're super, super thin, they're a baked formula. So again, they don't look heavy on the skin, they really do melt into the skin. You really wanna buff them in because again, they are a little bit more, not glittery, but they do have more pearlescence, I would say, than the Charlotte Tilbury. So it just depends on what you like. If you like an impact, you want something super, super intense, and it's like half the price, go with the Rare Beauty. These are really beautiful as well. Two drugstore affordable highlighters. This one from JCat is super similar to the Rare Beauty. I have mine in the shade Seaside Frost. The embossing just makes me happy every time I look at it. It's super pretty. It literally reminds me of an ocean, which is super fitting for the name. 
but I love how intense this one is without being glittery or sparkly. If you don't like an intense highlight, you're not gonna like this. But if you want something similar to the Rare Beauty highlighter on a budget, get the J-Cat because I feel like they're pretty close. Okay, I'm back and lunch is eaten. I was furiously chucking my teeth before this because I never wanna be like, remember that movie, uh, The Emperor's New Groove with Yzma? She's like talking and it's like, nya, 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 nya. and he looks at her and he sees like a vague thing of broccoli in her teeth and he's like, whoa, how long has that been there? What the? How long has that been there? I just feel like whenever I eat green stuff and I'm talking to someone, that's like my worst fear. It's one of my worst fears. So if I have something green in my teeth, don't tell me. Ah! Well, I don't have something green in my teeth, but I have lipstick on my teeth. Ah! All right, moving on. So I think we left off with this Essence the Highlighter, aptly named. I have mine in the shade 01 Mesmerizing. So if you like the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter, this is a little bit stepped up from that. So that one is super, super natural, beautiful, one of my favorites of all time. This one is like the big sister that's a little, just, just a little bit more intense, okay? The formula is different. The Essence Pure Nude is definitely more of that thin, baked feel. This one, when you swirl your brush or your finger around in it, it's gonna pick up a little bit more product. It's not powdery. As long as you don't use too much, you really buff it in. You go in with like a setting spray. This is beautiful. I really like it. It's like the big sister to the Pure Nude. It's amazing and it's literally under $10. Love, love, love. Oh wait, I forgot, I have one more highlighter. <laughs> so this is the only cream highlighter I have to mention. I'm not a big cream highlighter girly and I don't really like that sticky feeling on my cheek. So I tend to opt for like powder highlighters, but I'm making an exception for this one because it is, it is gorgeous, okay? This is a two-sided product. It is the NYX Wonder Stick. It has a cream contour slash bronzer on one side and then a cream highlighter on the other. Mine is broken, so it sort of jiggles around in there, but I don't even care because the product itself is gorgeous. I have mine in the shade Universal Light. I like to twist it up, rub my finger in it, tap it on the cheekbones, and it is, like, look at that. Are you kidding me? Are you, like, it is gorgeous. It gives you, like, that Charlotte Tilbury just got a facial glow. Not glittery, not sparkly. Because it's a cream, it's very natural in that it melts into the skin. It's undetectable. The way it catches the light, I start drooling. Like, I cannot stop looking at my cheekbones. It's so gorgeous. So gorgeous. Like, I will literally buy the product just for the highlight. Word of advice, the shade range is weird. I have the shade Fair as well, but the highlighter in that is actually darker than it is in Universal Light. I don't know what that's about, but if you're similar to my skin tone, definitely get this shade or just be wary of what color you're buying because it doesn't always really go from lightest to deepest as the names would lead you to believe, but it's gorgeous. It's literally better than some high-end products I've tried. In terms of blushes, I just have a few, you know, just a few. Probably my favorite discovery of the year was this Face Off blush from Hard Candy. In the shade of Born Yesterday, it's a beautiful baby doll pink, not too cool, not too warm. It looks so natural on the skin. It gives you that like, just out in the cold. I was skiing and the blood just sort of rushed to the surface of my skin. Very fresh pink cheek look. The finish is glowy, but not sparkly, not shimmery. It looks super, super natural because it is more of a buildable formula. It's more on the sheer side. So if you have more of a deep complexion, I don't know, unfortunately, if it's gonna show up on you. But if you're more fair to light, maybe even medium, this is gorgeous. It's definitely sheer, but you can build it up. It doesn't get patchy. It wears a really, really long time. That's one of my pet peeves with creams or liquids. They have to wear a really long time, and this one does. I love the packaging. It's super sleek and slim, and yeah, it's just amazing. I cannot say enough good things about it. Some of my other favorites, I love, I think I have one more blush color, but I, I don't know where it is. I think it's called Tutti Fruity, but I'm missing it. It's like the orangey one. But I love these blush mellows from J-Cat. These are more of a cream to powder formula. That's what I prefer. That's what I like with my cream products. They just wear longer. They don't slip and slide around. They don't feel greasy. But and they look really, really natural because they kind of give you the best of both worlds, right? Like they sink into the skin. They look super natural because they're a cream, but then they also have the longevity of a powder. So 
that's just what I like. If you like something really, really glowy, this might not be the blush for you, but I just love these. They're like five bucks, maybe super, super affordable. They come in really fun shades. I loved this one in the summertime because it gives you like that sunburnt bronzy glow. I love doing it across the nose, all over my cheeks. Looks super natural and it wore a really long time, even in the summer heat when I was super sweaty. This blush is the one I'm wearing today. It is the most beautiful, vibrant pink. If you have a deeper complexion, I feel like this will even show up on you because it does have way more punch than the hard candy. You can go in with a little bit and just tap it in and it's gonna sheer out nicely, but again, you can build it up to get more of that punchy blush look. It applies perfectly, beautifully over powders. Pinky one is in the shade Sweet and Chic. The more berry bronzy one is in Thank You Very Much. And then I have another one that's more orangey in Tutti Fruity. That one's really fun as well. So definitely check these out. I feel like J-Cat is one of those overlooked brands, but they have some really good hidden gems. This is from Juicy Peng. Well, actually, no, it's not from Juicy Peng. It's from Op. Apu? Apu? I don't know. It's a Korean brand. You can get it off of Amazon or Yes Style. This is one of the best purchases I've ever made in my entire life. It has that same pillowy, cushiony texture, similar to that of a ColourPop Super Shock. It's that cream to powder formula that you know I love. Wears really, really well. And I love the shade of this. It's a gorgeous baby doll pink. It's not too cool. It's not going to have too much of that lavendery base. So if you have more of a warm undertone like I do, this is gonna look super flattering on you, but it's still gonna be that trendy pink color that was really popular this year. They have a lot of fun shades, but I personally have the shade VL01. Last but not least in the blush category, these are banging from Essence. When I first saw that Essence was launching baked blushes, I knew immediately that I had to try them because I love the Pure Nude Baked Highlighter. That's one of my holy grail products. So, you know, I knew that Essence was gonna kill it when it came to these blushes. The one thing I will say, there's two caveats with this, with this blush. One, a lot of the colors can look pretty daggone similar. And two, the formula is a bit inconsistent. The first shade I bought in this, I actually didn't love because I forget what shade it was. I think it was something a bit more pinky. That one had like glitter in it and I was not impressed, so I returned that. But I heard from other YouTubers that the formulas were a little bit different. Like some of them have glitter, some of them are just more of a pearlescence, and some of them are a bit more satin. So for example, the shade 05 Pretty Peach, which is probably my favorite. This one is, as you can see in the pan, it has more of a sheen to it. It gives your cheeks a very healthy glow, but it's not sparkly at all. It just looks really luminous and healthy on the skin, and it was one of my favorites in the summertime. But in contrast, some of the other shades like 04 Bold Heart, this one doesn't really have a pearlescence. Like, it has more of a satiny finish, so it's not a flat matte, but it's not as glowy as the peach one. And this one is way more pigmented than the peach one. So I would say in terms of pigmentation and finish, they're a little bit different, which is not my favorite for a formula. So I would say definitely go in store to Ulta and look at the shades if you can, because they're not all the same. But if you find a good one that doesn't have sparkle and it's a shade that you like, I don't think you'll be disappointed because I really love them. I love the luminosity that this one gives, but I love that this one gives more of a punch but it's still not a flat matte. So I love them both for different reasons. Just something to keep in mind that they're not all exactly the same. This is my first indie palette I've ever tried and it started a whole movement within myself, okay? I'm obsessed with like indie palettes now and I am like biting at the bit to try more. This is the Jewels and Gems palette from Odin's Eye. So if you don't know, Odin's Eye is a Swedish indie makeup brand, which just means like independently owned. Look at this color story. That is what drew me in, but what kept me coming back for more is this formula, okay? The mattes are above and beyond what I expected. Super pigmented, super blendable, wear gorgeously on the eyes, and these shimmer shades are out of this world spectacular. These shimmers look like fireflies dancing on your eyelids. They're gorgeous. The formula is amazing and I can't wait to try more. I'm so happy 
I took the plunge and tried this because it is amazing. Two little drugstore palettes that I discovered, loved, tried, all the verbs. The first is from CoverGirl. This is their Clean Fresh Clean Color Quad. I have the one in Golden Toffee. I love this little quad. The mattes are super pigmented, very creamy, very pigmented. I love how smooth the shimmers look on the eyes. I loved this in the summertime for like that bronzy, sultry, smoky eye. I like how big the pan size is on. The packaging is very sturdy and I like that these come in a lot of different shades. So definitely if you're in the market for a drugstore affordable little quad. These are really, really good. And I actually, I think I like these more than the bite size palettes from e.l.f. Those are more affordable, but these are a little bit bigger. The color stories I feel like are a bit more cohesive and I like the shimmer formula in these a bit better. And the mattes. I think these are just a little bit better. Just a little bit better. Might be a controversial take there, but I really like them. Not me wiping my swatches on my pants. Nothing to see here. This little palette from LA Girls, this is their Radiant Beauty eyeshadow palette. This is like three bucks from Walmart. I kind of bought this on a whim one day as I was perusing the beauty section. Gorgeous little neutral everyday palette. This is not gonna be like Natasha Denona quality. It's not the most pigmented mattes you've ever tried in your entire life. Not the most intense shimmers, but if you are a natural girly, if you don't like a lot going on in the eyes, but you want a little something, you want a little bit of structure to your crease, you wanna do a little bit of a winged liner. Did I just dig my finger into this? <sighs> I'm a mess, okay. The shimmers are really pretty, kind of have that more toppery feel. Every eye look I've done with this has been really pretty, really soft, really feminine, really ethereal. Actually, the wear time on these pigments are super impressive as well. Sometimes with more affordable shadows, they just don't have that longevity. But for a $3 eyeshadow palette, I was really impressed. And if you're a babe on a budget, if you don't really like to invest a lot of money in eyeshadows, or if you're just starting out, I think this is a good little, a good little what is it, six, seven pan to pick up because it gives you like everything you need for an everyday look. So I really like it. And the, the matte cream in here is actually really, really good as well. And not all matte creams are created equally. I have a couple like liquid cream shadow, glitter shadow things, like eyeshadow products, but not eyeshadow palettes, if that makes sense. So the first is this little liquid, well, I guess it's technically, it's called a cream shadow from Smashbox, these are always on cream shadows. I have mine in the shade Sepia, which is like this brown khaki color with a little bit of like a greenish olivey undertone. If you have more of a warm olivey undertone like me, this is a super, super, super flattering color. It's so warm and toasty, almost leans a little bit yellowy, like I said, a little bit more greeny. I don't know, it just looks really flattering on my skin tone, especially when I have a little bit more of a tan. In the summertime, I was wearing this light crazy I would just squeeze a little bit out on the back of my hand take a fluffy brush and like pop it in the crease sometimes I would put it all over the lid blends out like a dream doesn't dry down too fast but once it dries down it stays put so it's really great for the summertime as well when you're gonna be out a little bit more maybe you're gonna be a little bit more oily more sweaty these lock down and they do not budge definitely check these out if you're in the market for a cream shadow I actually prefer this formula to something like the color fixes from Danessa Myricks I feel like these are a little bit easier to work with if you want a cream shadow, liquid shadow, I don't know like where the mark is for liquid to cream. I feel like it's a spectrum, right? Like the liquidiest thing would be like water and the creamiest thing would be like peanut butter. It's kind of a spectrum, cream, liquid, whatever floats your boat. Well, they're called liquids. Okay, let's just go with liquid. These shadow silks from Wet n Wild, amazing. Like sometimes when the drugstore kills it, the drugstore kills it. Like these shadow silks, next level good pigmented not patchy blend out like a dream stay put do not crease love these two colors that i have i have a matte one in neutral terra it's actually a little bit more rosy i would say than neutral but it's still really pretty if you're looking for more of a matte rosy shadow it's good for like a base of an eyeshadow look but for like a one and done bronzy eye, I would definitely recommend the shade Bronze Digger. This is probably my favorite shade. You can see maybe from the little bit of, like from the side here, how much I've used it. I love this for a quick and easy eye day. Amazing pickups from the drugstore. In terms of glitter, 
One of my other favorite discoveries of this year were these shadow pots from Moira. The first shade I tried was in Eureka, which is more of a silvery, topish, super intense metallic-y sparkle with like a warm reddish base. Super dimensional, super interesting. They come in a little pot, sort of like the hourglass shadows that come in something like this. You get a little stopper to keep them from drying out. I cannot take it out right now because my nails are absurdly long. The shadows inside are sort of damp feeling. They are like a creamy formula, but they can fall apart a little bit more if that makes sense. It's like a metallic, but a little bit more wet than that, if that makes sense. Super intense. I have four or five shades and I love them all. If you want to amp up any eyeshadow look, pop one of these puppies on the top and you'll look like a rock star. Thank me later. Another glitter that I love this year was from About Face. This is their Fractal Eye Paint. I have mine in Tin Pen Alley. This has more of a sheer base than the Moira shadows. This is more of a toppery type liquid shadow with a lot of little like multi-dimensional glitters. So you can top it over any eyeshadow that you have on your lid and it's just gonna like add a little bit of diamondy pizzazz. Love that it's a liquid because it's way less messy. This sticks down and it doesn't move. You don't get fallout. So amazing. Love it. In terms of eyeliner, my favorite discovery of the year for like an eyeliner type product are these Epic Smoke Liners from NYX. These have like a little paddle brush on one side that you can use to smudge out the liner. And that's my favorite way to use these liners. I don't use these in a traditional sort of eyeliner sense really. I love using these to sort of shape out my eye look. My favorite color is Nude Haze. And what I like to do is just smudge some on the outer corner, maybe bring a little bit into the outer crease to create a base to really get the depth going out there to really shape out my lid and then I will smudge it out with the little paddle brush. And it really just helps to, again, create that structure, amp up the intensity, really helps to create that depth. They're so creamy, so blendable, but once they set down, they stay in place really, really well. You can use them also to like smudge out on your lower lash line. That way you don't have to go in with like a brush and get maybe some fallout from a powder shadow. They're just really multi-purpose. This is like a staple in my collection. Let's quickly go through some brows and mascara. This is like more boring categories. For brows, the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. One of my favorites. It's pigmented, but not too pigmented to where you get like sharpie brows. Stays in place pretty well. Love the little like hair-like strokes you can get. I've been really into brow pens this year. I feel like they look a little bit more natural and more like PC than a brow powder or a brow pencil. Also love the Milani Clear Brow Gel. This gives you hold, but it doesn't feel crunchy or sticky in the brows. It's maybe not the most like intense brow gel ever, but it gives you enough and I think for like an everyday brow, it's just super easy. It doesn't make your brows look shiny or weird or crunchy. It doesn't leave like a dandruffy finish on the brows. Really like this. It reminds me a lot of the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel, if you've ever tried that. And then in terms of mascara, the Milani Highly Rated Lash Extensions Mascara. This is not going to be for everyone. The formula is super, super wet. So if you're not careful, it will really stick your lashes together and make you look like you have five lashes. It's not going to separate them super well. So you need to be careful to, first of all, wipe the brush off before you go in, do a coat, let it sit for a minute, go in with another coat, let it sit for a minute, and that will help you to get the most volume and length out of this mascara. But the thing I love most about this mascara is just that it's a tubing mascara. It's super, 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 super easy to remove at the end of the night with just some warm water. So I love this for an everyday look. It's not the most volumizing. It's not the most lengthening. It can be a little bit tricky to work with because it is so wet, but I'm lazy. And if you're a lazy girl like me when it comes to mascara, this is a lifesaver. It's way, way, way more affordable than a lot of other tubing mascaras on the market. If you are not a newcomer on my channel, you know how much I love these Maybelline lip vinyl ink stain things. What are these called? Super Stay vinyl inks from Maybelline. My all time favorite shade is peachy, perfect peachy pinky nude for every day. One of my holy grail products, but this year they launched a lot of new nude shades and I love them all. These are gorgeous. They give you a more like satin, semi glossy finish when you apply them. 
but they wear a really, 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 really long time without drying your lips out, without giving you that like butthole, crusty lip. It doesn't wear off weird like a lot of liquid lipsticks can do. I had to give a shout out to the nude and like reddish deeper shades that they launched this year. Every one that I've tried has been amazing. Another lip stainy formula that I loved this year were these Romand Juicy Lasting Tints. This is another K Beauty brand. They're sort of like a gel tint. They're not like a normal lip tint or lip stain that really dry out your lips. These go on with a really almost cooling, jelly sort of feeling. And I love the shade 23 Nucadamia, my perfect like everyday brownish pinky nude that's a little bit warm and then I also really love 22 Pomelo Skin which is a little bit of a lighter nude which I love with something a little bit more intense on the eyes. They're not as long wearing as the Maybelline but I don't really care because I love applying them to be honest because they do have that more gel water cooling sensation so it's just a treat to apply and I love the finished look and I love the colors and I love the price point they're like under 10 bucks. I loved these little lip jams from Catrice. It's called their Hydrating Lip Gloss, but it's more of a lip balm, lip treatment. I have mine in the Strawberry Baby number 20 shade slash color. It's very sheer. It does smell like strawberries though. Very cushiony, not sticky, hydrating on the lips. They come in this fun little squeezy tube and they just feel really nice. Ooh, and I just love the smell to be honest. They smell so good. They're like five bucks on Amazon and they give you a really pretty glossy finish. And again, they're really nourishing on the lips too. So definitely recommend trying these out. The NYX Fat Lip Drip Oils are also amazing. To me, these are more of a gloss than an oil. They're a little bit thicker, but again, ultra shiny. I love the shade. What is this, Newsfeed, I think? It's more of like a hot pinky red, but it's sheer, so it's not like overpowering. Really comfortable on the lips. I love the large doe foot applicator. Really nice gloss formula from the drugstore. I also love these clean, fresh lip products from CoverGirl. I love the Yummy Gloss, which had their viral moment this year. My favorite shade is 300 Acai You Later. It looks really dark and purpley and intense in the tube, but it does sheer out a lot. It gives you like that Clinique Black Honey sort of look on the lips, which on my skin tone is super, super flattering. These can get a bit thick and gunky if you apply too much, but I love the smell and the color and the feel so much that like I overlook it because they just feel so like comfy and nourishing on the lips even though they can get a little bit gunky if you're not careful. I also love the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Lip Balm in Bliss You Berry. As you can tell I love these berry tones. Again it's like that Clinique Black Honey sort of brownish purpley color. It's the lip color I'm wearing today in the center of my lips. Super hydrating, super nourishing, and I love the little like bitten, stained look it gives to the lips. Another lip balm that I love this year was this Dew Glow Lip Hydrator from JCAT. I had mine in the shade Dew Hydrate, which is just this really soft, pinky color. It's basically a tinted lip balm. I loved how hydrating, I love the easy application, just a little twist up, like chapstick sort of deal. Three or four bucks, so definitely wanna pick up more shades. Definitely recommend if you're in the market for like a tinted chapstick lip balm sort of a thing. Really, really good. Barbie. Love you, Barb. I love you. You're so cute. You're so cute. You're pretty kitty. Pretty kitty. All right, last but not least, we're gonna go over some lip liners. So Catrice launched these plumping lip liners. The thing I love most about these is that they're super long wearing, which is what I look for in a lip liner. I want them to stay in place. And it's something that a lot of drugstore or affordable lip liners struggle with sometimes. They don't always stay in place. They're not necessarily plumping, but that doesn't bother me because I don't really need my lip liner to be plumping. I also really love these Shockwave lip liners from LA Girl. I have mine in the shade Coquette, just like a pinky brownie nude. These again, super creamy when you apply them, but they do dry down and they last a really, really long time on the lips. Same thing goes for these NYX Line Loud lip liners. I have a bunch of these. I'll show you the swatches. Same deal, creamy, but dry down. That's my spiel when it comes to lip liners. I want them to stay in place all day because I have small lips and I need my lip liner to like keep that definition around my lips or else my eyes, which are huge, just like throw my whole face out of balance. So if you like a lip liner that stays in place, 
these. Check out these ones from NYX, and they do have really, really good nude shades. NYX does lip liners really well. Lip products in general, they do really well. And then another like semi-affordable, sort of high-end lip liner formula that I discovered and love this year are from About Face. I think these are called their Matte Fix Lip Pencils. The first shade in my favorite shade that I tried is Cradled which is the lip liner I'm wearing today. It's sort of a deeper brown with a little bit of a dusty rose undertone. Again, same spiel, creamy, but dry down and very long wearing. I have like four of these. They're all really, really good, but I will say that the deepest shade that I have in lockdown, this one, it's a beautiful color. I love the plummy tone of this, but it doesn't wear the longest like in the center of your lips. Wears really long on the outside, but in the center of your lips, it doesn't wear the longest. So something to keep in mind. So yeah, guys, those are all the products that I've been loving in the year 2023. Let me know what products you have been loving this year. I always love to hear what you guys recommend, what you guys have been loving. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I will catch you guys in my next video.